Mind Valley is maybe one of the biggest publishers of meditation products worldwide. We love meditation. We're trying to make meditation cool and get it out to a billion people、um, over the next couple of decades. From meditation, we've expanded to other so-called enlightened ideas. What I mean by that is stuff that are essential to the human experience that help you grow, help you give back to to humanity, help you make an impact, but are not necessarily thought in the traditional college education system. Meditation is one. Spiritual awareness is another. Being able to question dogma, to question the rules of society, to build companies rather than take regular corporate jobs,、uh, to focus on happiness rather than striving for a salary or work—all of these are ideas we want to get out to the masses. I started Mind Valley in New York, and what happened was、uh, after September 11, having a Malaysian passport and trying to start a business in the U.S. got tricky. I came back to Malaysia, and Malaysia at that point in 2001. Wasn't the best place in the world to start a business. For starters, Malaysia has a huge, massive brain drain issue. The smartest people leave the country. They migrate to Hong Kong, Singapore. In 2007, Malaysia lost about a quarter million people, and that's huge given the population is is about 25 to 30 million. So it's about one percent of the population leaving every year, and the smartest people. So when I came back to Malaysia, my high school friends, all of whom were now in the UK or Hong Kong or Singapore, told me, "What the hell are you doing? Why, someone with your talent, why would you come back?" But I really believe in in, in Buckminster Fuller's interpretation of how to deal with shitty situations, and it's this: you you would you solve a, an intractable problem not by focusing on the problem. But by creating a new model, a vision that renders that problem obsolete. So I decided, okay, I have two choices. I can choose to worry about brain drain and decide that you know I'm going to stay here and struggle and strive and try to get good talent and build a company, or I can say, fuck that. Brain drain will not impact me. And I decided that my new vision to render the old model obsolete is to build the world's greatest place to work, not one of the world's greatest places, the world's greatest place to work, better than Google. Better than Facebook, better than Zappos, better than any other company out there. So I started studying all the things these companies did and deciding how to one up them. And Mind Valley was born. And、um, in a very short amount of time, what that vision started becoming real. Now we get people from all around the world applying to join Mind Valley. So much so that if you get on YouTube and you type in Mind Valley cover letter, you see hundreds of videos from people all around the world. You can go to to one of our websites, worldsmostawesomejob.com. That was for just one position at Mind Valley, and we have like again about a hundred applicants from thirty five countries. So we get to pick the best and brightest, and when they come here, the whole business is focused on putting them to a transformation. So our office is Google like. It is beautiful. It's stunning. And、um, but more than that, more than the fun and the culture, is personal growth. Because we are a personal company, we figured we would be incongruent with our,、uh, with our values unless we really put our employees through personal growth. So, 22-year-olds join Mind Valley as interns, and years later, they're doing epic things in the world. Mayor Ahmad joined us as a, as an intern from Sudan. He was studying at a university in Malaysia. Joined Mind Valley. Two years later, he had his own business. Then he came back to Mind Valley. Now he runs Mind Valley Arabic. He just spoke with Jimmy Wales at the Oslo Peace Forum. He、um, just spoke at MIT recently. He has a book coming out. The guy's twenty six. And over and over and over again, young people join Mind Valley, go out and do epic things.、So、now we have a hundred and ten people. But get this: twenty percent of everyone who has joined Mind Valley becomes an entrepreneur within two years. That is phenomenal. Other companies like Google, Facebook can't match that because the ultimate point of self-actualization to me is when you are in control of your own life. You're able to go out there, build a business, start an NGO, get your, you know, your passion, your invention, your message out to the world, and be in control of your own destiny. We're a company that actually turns our employees into entrepreneurs. And then we thought, well. If we can have this impact on our employees, why not have it on other companies? So the next thing we did is we decided to open source ourselves. We launched Mind Valley Insights, where you can now go and learn from us. So any entrepreneur who wants to learn how to build a Mind Valley like company can basically go and steal our management policies, our culture models, our hiring process, and many companies have, and we we love that. So in Malaysia, we started not just Attracting smart people to mind that and creating a vision of what a Malaysian company could look like, but we started inspiring other Malaysian companies to do this sort of thing. And the next thing we we want to do create is a Malaysian Renaissance. 
So first, we solve the brain drain problem for ourselves. We now suck the best talent from the rest of the world and bring them to Mind Valley to work at Mind Valley HQ. Now we have finally teaching other Malaysian companies to do that, but we want to go even bigger. So, I ask myself this question, right? If I believe that reality is a malleable and that with the right focus, the right, the right amount of hard work, nothing is impossible. The craziest, biggest, most epic, mind blowing thing we could do to serve the world, have fun, and make an impact. And we decided, well, let's recreate the European Renaissance in Malaysia. So now we start re evaluating how the Renaissance movement came up in Florence in the 14th century. And we're now applying that to Malaysia. Our goal is in 10 years to put Malaysia on the map to one of the top 20 places in the world to start a dot com, to take it from a country where people are leaving and going to Silicon Valley or Hong to make it a country where people come to start epic, world changing mobile app companies and dot coms and personal growth businesses and publishing businesses, and eventually take Malaysia to nanotechnology and 3D printing and all these other things coming up. Now, how do we do that? Well, like I said, recreating the European Renaissance. So think about this, right? Florence, Italy, the 14th century. People came together, the smartest people in the world assembled in one location. And from there, art, uh, culture, inventions, creativity, the likes of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Caraccio, all exploded. It happened again in Silicon Valley in the 70s, when a guy assembled a group of programmers in his garage, started a group called the Homebrew Computing Club, and got like-minded individuals to discuss electronics. Two men in that garage, Steve and Steve, a Wozniak and Steve Jobs, teamed up and Apple was born. So what did we do? We decided to replicate that garage model. So one week, one month ago, uh, well actually uh, two, two years ago, we decided to open up our office space and uh, uh, we have a giant meeting room in our office space called the Hall of Boston. It holds about 65 people. We opened it up and get to the public so people could start different groups. That first group was WebCamp. It was seven techies who came together to discuss technology, and it grew. WebCamp now has 1,700 members. When they have meetups in the Hall of Awesomeness, 100 plus people show up for their own mini TED Talk on technology. From WebCamp, hack, um, um, hackathons are, are emerging, new dot coms are emerging, people are teaming up and launching mobile apps, and we thought, why stop the technology? Let's do this for art for advertising, for marketing, for social media, for entrepreneurship, for culture, for public speaking. So now we are sponsoring 20 groups in Malaysia. And one month ago, we opened up, fully self-funded, the new Hall of Awesomeness. It's now a 150-seater auditorium attached to our office, state-of-the-art, and we give it to the public for free. Every night, we sponsor a new group. So tonight, for example, we have a performance meetup in Different Malaysians come and do a jam session. We're promoting arts and culture. On Friday, we have a meetup called Incitement, where Malaysians come to learn to incite, to say things that are not meant to be said in a Muslim Asian country. Public speaking, to, to, to promote dangerous ideas. And then the week after that, we have webcam, where Malaysians talk technologists come by. And soon we're going to have a meeting every single day. And my Valley folk go out to the community and start these groups. In short, we are merging a company with a university. And that university is completely free, completely grassroots driven. Now, hundreds of people in the last two years, 10,000 of Malaysia's smartest folks have been in our office and operated these groups. Now with the new model of business, we think we can do 10,000 people, maybe a year rather than in two years. We just basically doubled it. Now we started Mind Valley Films, we are building all these talks and we're getting them out to the masses. So think about it. We have Malaysia's smartest programmers, iOS uh, app programmers, designers, IXDA, uh, 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 sorry, UX designers, we meet in a group called IXDA, gathering together, sharing ideas in the form of TED Talk. When we build this, get this out to the masses. What we want is 17 year olds here to decide that they simply don't go to college. They can come study online and figure out how to monetize the, an iPhone app or build a blog and get money from Google AdSense. We want to spark an entrepreneurial. Now, we're not just stopping there. We're now bringing layers of venture capital to invest in ideas that form in these groups. We are building a platform. We start next week to unite together designers with coders, with programmers, with people so people can start companies. And the next thing we want to do is start something called the Mind Valley Fellowship. Where like what we did in Silicon Valley, every year I want to pick 25 of the smartest people 
under 25 years old and personally give them access to all our resources, all the groups, and over 10 years, groom the next generation of legendary entrepreneurs. Now, like I said, one of the key values of my value is we always they always push beyond and beyond and beyond. So we call this project Renaissance. And within three years, we intend to also take this global. Already many, many of the groups that we started here in Malaysia have spread to countries like Thailand and Iran, even recently Canada and the US, and now we're taking it global. We're exploding. We've exploded awesomeness that's already, which sort of does the same thing for Americans. We're now launching APS East, APS Med in Italy. And again, what we're trying to do is spark on, on amazing legendary entrepreneurship all around the world. One of the things I learned most, most, most early on, and it's, it's an exercise I now do with everyone who joins MindVal, it's called the three most important questions. It's understanding the difference between a needs goal and an end goal. Too many of us get caught up in a needs trap. In other words, we forget that the aspect of life is to love, to impact, to grow, to travel, to be happy. And we get caught up in this bullshit need goal regimen, which is get a GPA, graduate from college, work a shitty job so you can retire someday, make, you know, do, do stuff that you detest because of these rules that society has told you you have to follow, whether it's getting married or staying within a certain religion or sexual orientation, blah, 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 blah. blah. So when people join my family, one of the things we do is we have them skip all of that and answer the three questions. And we know the answer to these three questions. Everything in your life changes. And the three questions based essence of what it means to be human. The first is experiences. What experiences do I want? And so we have everyone right now the experiences they want, whether it's a particular or the opportunity to travel or to have an amazing uh, sex life. Those are experiences. The second question is, who do I need to grow? Who do I need to become to be the person who is worthy of these experiences? So now people List of all the talents and skills to grow that you want to accomplish. And the third one is if I can have these experiences, if I can meet some service experiences and attract them, how do I get back to the world? So that third question is essentially contribution. Let's look at the three again, right? Experiences, growth, contribution. Experiences, I, I, I really have a metaphysical, spiritual world of view of the world. That means that we are souls having a physical experience. The reason we are here is to experience everything that the world has to offer. And the second two, vision, um, really is inspired by Tony Robbins. He gave a TED talk where he talks about our two greatest spiritual needs. And he says that happiness is easy. True fulfillment comes when you're growing and you're contributing to the planet. Okay, so again, we have experiences, growth, contribution. Now, everyone in Mind Valley makes this list and hang everyone's list on a wall. So I can basically walk to walk out the growth experiences and contribution list. So I can this for a single person who works with me. And everyone can see it for each other. And as a company, we commit to helping each other attain these. Now when you do this, you skip the bullshit. You skip the ideas of you know getting an MBA or getting getting a particular GPA, and you go straight for what matters, being a human being leads to so much more happiness, so much less depression. People being able to ever, I mean, people at Mind Valley, like we don't think about things such as retirement or old age. We, we, we some people we go straight to the core ethics of people. And that's really why we have this fanatical culture. It's because we feel that we see things different and we're a lot happier than, than, than people who caught up in the on the and, and society's rules. So again, my advice to anyone is when you understand this, you really help yourself escape the BS, you escape the rules. But more importantly, when you understand it for your spouse or your best friend or your co-workers, it's like having a blueprint into your soul. You really, really, really get to understand someone. And it causes even deeper bonds. So again, we do it for ourselves. We do it so we can have deeper bonds with each other. I think what we should all be thinking about is how do we empower young people to become, to lead self-sustaining lives, to, to basically be entrepreneurs. I don't need necessarily build a company. 
but to even be it to operate a small business on the other, whether it's running on the web or mobile apps or a small consulting business or offering design services. I, the problem that the world right now, the reason so many people are unhappy, is because they get caught up pursuing the idea of a career and a job when really true happiness comes from the freedom you get being able to monetize something that you truly enjoy.